Hey right bags, today I'm going to take you through everything you need to know about smelting the three different crafting benches, where you can craft the most sought after ingots, fastest way to reduce your smelting time and all the cards that are going to help you get double the amount of resources when you're going ahead and refining or even gathering. Find this video useful, leave a like, check out the rest of my content and let's go. So by now you should have worked out that you buy all of your crafting benches, mostly from traders. You can get some as rewards and you can get some randomly as well by completing encounters. The simple smelter should be able to get from obviously the abeyance realm and that will be the essence trader near the site of power. It's extremely basic, you can only make glass ingots, reclaimed ingots, shaft and wire. Now reclaimed ingots is really good, basically means if you ever make too much wire you can put it back into here and get the ingots back. So if you've ever had an accident and made too much of something like a hundred shafts and you're never going to use all of them, there is a way to get it back. Admittedly though, you will lose some of the resources that you crafted in the first place to get them, as it takes two refined pieces of metal and often you need two ingots just to make one. And of course the basics are that you need gems to go ahead and make glass. Quartz is obviously going to be the one that you probably find in abundance. But then you've got Petrified Ica. That is a resource that drops from certain bound that you'll see them on a cross, basically hovering and flying in the sky. Can only be found, I think, on some of the harder level realms. But the rest are more common what you expect. Things like Obsidian, Emeralds, Rubies, Sapphires, and Amber. Other drops that also count as glass, technically, or crystals, are the stuff that you get from the automatons. So you've got all the rooks and you've also get a drop from the bishops too. These do have attributes. So if you pair this in the right manner for anything that may need glass on your armor or weapons, which isn't as much as metal or wood, do think carefully about whether or not some of these could actually transfer to your build and whether or not they're suitable. Emeralds give much more movement speed and poison resistance. Rubies give maximum health and fire resistance. Amber's also can give you better movement speed but it also gives you critical damage and cold resistance. Anyway, I am going to be doing a full blown guide on this, all the resources and what they really offer in terms of making the best weapons and armor. But for now, this is still just more about the crafting stations themselves. Obviously, if you're looking for all these, you should be checking your index, in fact, the glossary, and it will show and tell you what realms you can find it on and what power level. So Amber is found on all realms, Amethyst in Swamp, Diamond on all realms, but again, a rare drop that you find maybe again in only caves. Emeralds on desert and swamp. You get the idea. I'm not going to read them all. You can check this for yourself. Now, raw gems are obviously useful because you need a lot of it to craft glass, which is going to be obviously for making your cards. Also need it for cut gems, which some of the armor and weapons do require, especially some crafting benches. But one thing that stumped me a good while ago was that maybe there might be recipes that say they want colored gems or colored glass. Well, that simply means you're using obviously a more rarer glass, basically something with color in it. So that could be amber, that could be sapphire, it could be the emerald, it could be ruby. Now, when it comes to ingots, it's usually always two ores into one. And again, there's so, so many different ores. A lot of these you will not be able to get until you get the right level. And that does go for some of the gems as well. Glossary does tell you every single ore type as well as where you can find them and what realm power they need to be. If you don't create a realm over level 100, you're not going to find Arium inside the forest. What this guide doesn't tell you is the level required to mine a lot of this stuff. You can find platinum literally in all realms of the forest. You can find platinum in pretty much all forests but you won't be able to mine it, I do believe, until you get level 230 pick. I've got a couple of these to tick off my list still, so I'm gonna do a little, little further guide on all the benefits of them. But today it is definitely more about what these can actually craft, if you've been wondering. And then shafts and wires are just literally components. And again, you're gonna need a lot of ingots. Next up is the brazier. You should find this once you start heading into, I do believe, the provisional realms. That's where you get all the other refined benches. This opens up the game massively. We've now got 28 different components that you can craft, plus lenses. These are the materials you're gonna to need to go ahead and make your gun like an action or a barrel. And again, obviously you can get guns in the provisional realms. If you've managed to get a lot of ore, I definitely recommend always crafting at least maybe 10 or something, as you will be using a lot of things like metal tips and metal plates. 
Although do bear in mind you also get metal plates as drops from killing certain enemies like the automaton sometimes. So you can absolutely get rid of your simple smelt if you want, but I would say keep it around just to help and make your ingots. If you check the station traits in any of these workbenches, you can see what is affecting the cook time. Having a second older furnace nearby is giving me the well lit, although that can be a campfire as well. And I've also got the warm function too coming from the same source. So they both reduce the crafting time by 10 seconds each. And obviously because it is sheltered as well. And this is before adding any kind of augmentations. So right now it only takes 30 seconds to cook an ingot as long as you've got a fire going next to whatever smelting station you've got. It's a bit of a weird one, but it does pay off to keep your actual smelters together and also to make sure you've got a light source nearby. You really don't want to be getting through all that wood, just a simple torch or light will do the trick as well for the well lit bonus. Now I've only got one fire going, it's going to take 40 seconds to cook an ingot. So split the loads whenever you're making any ores, or like I said, keep your basic ones for just single ingots and a blacksmith's hearth for the more advanced stuff. And obviously the blacksmith's hearth has got much more advanced gear, adding another 11 or 12 different components. And this is how you're gonna make the best pickaxes and the best weapons and tools, but not until you've got to the watch and you start exploring the ascended realms. The big tip I need to give here is about certain ores or how to get them. People seem to be confused about etched ingots. They simply are just two ingots, but sometimes it will say you need two alloy etched ingots. Now, if you're into metals, you will know that some ores are combined to make one new metal. And in this game, that is bronze and brass. You can see the brass ingot needs copper and zinc. Zinc you find in any low level swamp area, zero to 50. I think copper's pretty much found in all biomes. And then bronze copper ore and tin ore. Once you then go ahead and made that, and that's four ores to make one ingot, so that's eight ore total just to get one etched ingot, but that's how you get the alloy versions. If you're looking for precious ones, which it will say, that's usually precious metals like gold and silver, and it's the same deal. There won't be a precious metal ingot. Instead, you just simply make sure you choose silver to go ahead and make the etched ingot silver and that will be your precious ingot. Doesn't seem to be any difference in etched ingots and regular ingots, whether or not it applies at different powers and buffs or percentages. So don't try making etched ones just to use them, but you can use them in crafting. So be careful you're not accidentally using your etched ones because obviously they take double the amount of ingots to craft than just regular ones. Last one to also note that people have been asking about is steel. You don't actually get a chance to make steel until you go ahead and get the third and final blacksmith's hearth. Steel and goods are made out of iron and coal. A couple other things as well, once you start making better pickaxes, some of them will ask for a pickhead. And then you'll also see that you've got different ones like this artisanal pickhead. These are specifically for certain pickaxes. You can't use these on any pickaxe. So don't put all your resources into this at first because it's usually a level above maybe what you're gonna be trying to aim or make. So as said, you'll find the simple smelter in the abeyance realm, 55 essence dust, and yep, your brazier you can get from any of the provisional realms, and that's gonna be 15 of the tier one essence. Crucially, you need to go to the swamp herbarium to get the blacksmith's hearth, and that again is 15 of the tier two essence. It's the only place you can buy this, maybe until much, much later anyway. Maybe I've missed like a really late game one, but there's only three augments for furnaces. You'll find bellows, which obviously an augment, in the desert antiquarian trader. And you will find these in other traders as you progress as well. But this is your first chance to get this. Crude grindstone is another augmentation that you get from the forest provisioner realm. And if you want an anvil, you need to travel to the forest herbarian essence trader. And that's gonna be 10 of the tier two essence. Remember these are important. When you start getting the end game weapons at the moment after you've gone to the watch, a lot of these tools and maces and mauls you won't be able to craft unless you've actually got this anvil. And again, you can check all of this yourself if you're particularly looking for something. But the refined maul is something that I've seen a lot of players asking about. One thing to note that the augments for furnaces, 
pretty much all do the same thing. They'll unlock all the same types of mauls and two pieces of armor. What you do find difference is when you use them same augments for other crafting benches, they will unlock specific different items like different potions like the anvil there. So if you're making a furnace room, you only really need one of them augments because you can't stack the buff that it gives, which also reduces the refining time. So basically make either the crude stone if you come across it or if you've got it as a reward, make the anvil or make the bellows. You don't need all three in your furnace room, only one of them. But if you do want to craft every kind of armor and weapon, you might need the others for later for other stuff. Right, if we move the crude grindstone over, you can see we've got another reduction in refinement time. Just make sure something's lit. The smith ore cannot be doubled up by two of these particular benches. So what's important is having at least just one of these augments and one of fire nearby, and that's going to reduce your cook time down to 20 seconds for an ingot. And of course, making sure you've got a light source. If you was hoping to double up on light sources to make it even quicker, again, it can only take one of these buffs at a time, so it's still only 20 seconds. So for the perfect setup, have two of your refineries here, whether it's the simple, the brazier, or the brazier and the hearth, whatever a combination, make sure you've got at least one of these augments, a light source just in case one of the other actual benches run out of wood, and always do try and keep making sure that one of them is lit as it gives that warmth bonus, reducing everything down to only 20 seconds to craft for ingots and a lot quicker for other stuff. A few other things to note, just like anything that needs a fire, you can use coal in these and it burns a lot better. Wood burns a lot better than the fiber. And look out for your NPCs automatically fueling some of your gilded wood in here. There's a known bug with launch that they keep putting it in even if you've put gilded wood inside a chest and said that chest shouldn't be taken out of, they sometimes do it. So I would advise before crafting anything in a smelter, always go ahead and check what's actually inside. Some cards to note, the artisan card. You can pretty much get more durability out of any crafted items and it means that you don't have to have roofs over your base as you won't have any negative effects. The artisan card you'll find at the Swamp Provisioner Essence Trader. The Combatant's Workshop card. This gives you tools that will do more damage, but it does mean you won't get as many resources when using them. The Harvester's Workshop card is almost the opposite. You'll get more resources from harvesting and reduced stamina cost, but lower damage. So if you really want the best tools just to go ahead and mine, play the Harvester's Workshop card as it'll be quicker and give you better stamina when swinging. The Harvester's card you'll find at the Astrolabe Essence Trader in the forest. If you're still going to be using your pickaxe or your axe as a main weapon for a while, then you might want the Combatant's Workshop card instead. The Combatant's card you'll find at the Desert Astrolabe Essence Trader. The Industry card is really good as well. This you'll get more, you'll get double. With this you'll get double the amount of crafted ammunition and ingots. And it does reduce the crafting time of all refinement as well. It does make the whole area pretty dank and smoggy. The Industry card you'll find at the Desert Provisioner Essence Trader. The Forge card is extremely similar, good for actually when you're going to harvest some ore as you'll get more out of it. It reduces the time it takes to cook the ore and it will improve the quality of your metal items. But it does mean that other items may not be as good when you've crafted them. The Forge card you'll find at the Swamp Herbarian Essence Trader. And if you like to block a lot, then you might want to get hold of the Bulwarks card, craft tools and you get more blocking. The Bulwarks card you can find at the Swamp Astrolade Essence Trader, although I'm sure you might have picked some up by now. It does increase the stamina cost though when you're using it. So hopefully that will help you along the way get the most out of what you're doing. It really does help to have a set time or set day where you're going to be crafting a lot of one type of resource. Spend a good hour going and getting the ores that you want. Come back, play the Forge or the Industry card, craft all them ingots, craft their metal items in bulk so that you've got a good supply. If you start crafting 10 or 20 pins or metal plates at a time instead of only one or two just needed, it will save you so much time later on. Tin is probably the most common found ore in the game, so that's the one that you should be making the most basic components, especially to make crafting benches and stuff, as they don't take on any attributes. You can absolutely have your crafting benches set up in the main room, which is what we had. I've only moved it in this room today for a guide and to see what it would be like with a bit more space as we are going to need it to craft and store some more items. 
So I hope this video has been useful. I'll be doing this with all of the different crafting benches now I've unlocked them all, giving you some top tips about placing them, the augments that go with them. So do check out the rest of them and the rest of my Nightingale guides and look out for the ore guide that is coming in soon once I've finally got my level 230 pickaxe. So until next time, Ratbags, laters.